What's up guys? So I am here to review Red Sand, the drug. <laughs> The fan-made movie for Mass Effect. It was made by the University of Advancing Technology in Arizona. It just came out yesterday, and the really cool thing about it is that Mark Mir, I just dropped my notes. They were able to get uh, Mark Mir to star in it, uh, which is super awesome. And for those of you that don't know, Mark Mir was the voice, uh, the voice actor for Male Shepard in Mass Effect. He pretty much did a lot of the aliens in Mass Effect, not just, not just Shepard, he did uh, Vorcha, he did Volus, I believe he did Hanar. So yeah, he did quite a few. So it was awesome that they were able to get him to act um, in this fan-made uh, mini movie. I believe it was like 13 minutes, no more than 14 minutes. It stars the main character, John Grissom. For those of you that know anything about the Mass Effect books, uh, John Grissom came out in the first novel, Revelation. Um, so it was, it's really, it was really cool to know that he was going to be the main character in this little fan-made um, movie and that Mark Muir was going to be playing him. So uh, yeah, I was excited. Grissom might sound uh, familiar to you guys even if you haven't read the books from the Grissom Academy from Mass Effect 3. He was the one that started that Biotic Academy. Um, and his daughter is Collie Sanders. He's a pretty big deal um, in the lore, more like it. Uh, especially when you go back to the discovery of the mass relays, or at least this, the human discovery of the mass relays. I've gone over this in a few of my Mass Effect talks. I, I, I went over this in the, my humans Mass Effect talks. I talked about the discovery of the mass relays and how John Grissom was one of the, uh, he was pretty much, he's pretty much viewed as like the, one of the Alliance heroes because he, he was one of the few that went through the, the, the first mass relay that they found orbiting Pluto that was encased in ice called the Charon relay. They had thought that it had been one of Pluto's moons, but after they, they found the, the ruins, the Prothean ruins on Mars, they realized that there was something more to this. And that's what this movie is about, or this mini movie. Uh, so it was really, really cool to see this. Um, it is fan made, but it's very true to what happened. Like the whole, the whole idea of when, when they found the, the Prothean, uh, the Prothean archives or the Prothean uh, ruins on Mars, um, where like 18, uh, nations of, of, of the world got together or something like that. That actually happened. So th they, they've got their, their lore right. The whole red sand thing, the group uh, that would smuggle red sand, the drug in the Mass Effect universe, which actually contains Ezo or uh, Element Zero, um, that gives biotic powers uh, and is a very addictive drug. They implemented that whole little thing for uh for the conflict so it worked john grissom is a colonel in this point so uh he he he's one of the teams that are sent to protect one of the doctors or the science team uh researching the prothean uh, archives or the prothean ruins and the really cool thing about this is that when i well, at first i was like like it totally jumped out, but I, I, it, it's obvious. It's completely obvious that this is what they were going for. You've got John Grissom, and remember he's Collie's father, but her last name's Sanders, Collie Sanders, and there's a girl on his team, on John Grissom's team, named Sanders with the last name Sanders. Now we all know that that Collie didn't take Grissom's last name, so it it it, it points to her taking her mother's last name, Sanders. So. It's pretty much her mother, that, 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 that lady that is on the same team. When I heard that, it, it just, I was like, oh my god, that's gonna be Kali's mom. I call her Kali, I'm sorry, I, I think it's Callie, Kaylee. I call her Kali because you've got that H there, um, the K-A-H. Uh, L E E. So I, I call her Kali, but I believe in Mass Effect 3 they called her Kaylee or something like that. 
whatever. They didn't they didn't show any of the romance between Grissom and Sanders though. I mean, they obviously weren't together yet. Uh, Kali wasn't born yet or Kaylee, whatever. So it was like before they got together, but it was like kind of like something was sparking there. And you could kind of see that in a, in a moment, but then the doctor ruins it. It's that moment where she gets hurt, Sanders gets hurt, and then Grissom goes to help her. Still alive? You're tougher than I thought. Grissom, come to the lab immediately. Way to prevent the conception of Kaylee Sanders, hater. Another thing that I found really funny was that they used the Windhelm scream. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's that scream. I'm pretty sure all of you have heard this scream. It's been used in like, I think over 200 films. Um, it's that, that, that trademark scream that... <laughs> It usually happens when someone gets shot or falls off a cliff or something. Um, it, it was in a lot of, pretty much everybody that screams in Star Wars, in the old school Star Wars, even in the prequels, I think, was a Windhelm scream. Uh, I think Indiana Jones as well. Like, George Lucas is a huge fan of the Windhelm scream, but it's in a lot of movies. They used that scream, and I just thought it was hilarious. Uh, I was like, oh my god. That scream always makes me laugh. Another really cool thing was that the the archives that they found at this Prothean ruin on Mars, um, the doctor uh, realizes that it's the galaxy map. So he, he's like, oh, I finally found what it is. And he pushes some buttons or whatever, and the galaxy map appears up above. And I just thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, wow, that's so awesome. You know, the first time they ever saw the galaxy map. And then, you know, we see it all the time in the in the video games. Uh, it wasn't like freaking jaw dropping or anything like that. But it's just so cool to be able to see this, even if it is fan made. But just to see it happening and not have to imagine it happening. Because I've read it so many times on like the Mass Effect wiki uh, and in the books and all that. Um, but actually seeing it is so cool. Uh, you know, seeing the, the galaxy map for, for the first time and just seeing it like all the mass relays connect with each other. And then just this like this this thing in the back of your mind where you're just like... So that wasn't the Protheans, dude. Like the Protheans, it's like this foreshadowing that you, you that we're kind of aware of, you know. Like it's kind of like this imminent doom eventually. Like it's like the, the Protheans weren't the ones that made that. It was, it was the it was the the Reapers. It shows the the Charon re relay when it's encased in ice, and um, it, it breaks the ice. They break the ice off. They activate it, and it's just like. Oh man, there it goes, you know. And then right after that is the, the first contact war, uh, where it all come, it all, it all starts pretty much. That relay was encased in ice for good reason. It was almost like the Protheans wanted to, um, to preserve humans. It, it, I mean, we all know that the Protheans were studying humans, and it's kind of like. Like, the Protheans were re almost saving the humans. Like, they, they, they were studying them, um, uh, kind of, like, thinking to themselves, the Reapers are probably going to be interested in the humans because because of their genetics or because of their advancements and all that. Um, so they must have been like, we've got to keep an eye on these guys or we've got to, like, really secure these guys so that they don't fall into the trap and you know start going through all the mass relays and spreading and all that kind of pretty much what the reapers want another really cool thing that i that just like a little side note was when um grissom has to uh disarm a bomb it's like in mass effect you know like when you have to like um, like in Mass Effect 2 and in Mass Effect 1 where you had to uh decode a door or something you know like to open it where you had to like do this little mini game to uh you know like a b a b that that was that was for mass effect one that was horrible i hated that one and then mass effect two was like you know uh match the match the, the the shapes and that's kind of what grissom was doing uh to disarm the bomb which was really really cool i was just like oh my god it looked like he was playing a little mini game and it just made me laugh he was like dee, dee, dee. And then he would like smile and he's like, yes, like almost like, yes, I got it. It's not just in the games, guys. That's how it really is. 
So it was really cool to see this. If you haven't seen it, I, I recommend you watch it. Don't expect something like Hollywood style because it is fan made, but it was very well made for this university. Uh, it looks like they did, they took a lot of time with it. It looks like they put a lot of uh, effort into it. And um, it looks like they did their homework. You know, they, they really, they wanted to get it down right. And I mean, just, it's a plus to have to be to see Mark Mir there and just hear him and it's just like oh my god it's Shepard and you're actually seeing him um so that was that was really cool so massive props to these guys uh at the University of Advancing Technology in Arizona I will provide the link in the description I would recommend any Mass Effect fan to watch it uh there's really no reason you shouldn't this is part of the Mass Effect lore that isn't really talked about or delved into in the games. It's mostly delved into uh, in the in the books um, and in the codex and all that. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. If you guys already watched it, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. And thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.